Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Radical Health Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Balin. Today, we have a very special guest who's become well-known in the international community based around a particular practice and understanding of healing and physiology called the Mucusless Diet Healing System. This system was pioneered by Professor Arnold Arrett in his groundbreaking book called The Mucusless Diet Healing System, A Scientific Method of Eating Your Way to Health, published in 1922, and is promoted widely today through the living examples of people like Professor Spira and my esteemed guest today, Brother Eyre. Many thousands of people around the world have adopted the mucusless diet healing system to radically change their physiology away from mucus-forming foods, away from disease, and toward a diet and lifestyle that promotes clean blood, clean organs, and clean vessels by shifting to cleaner burning natural foods and less food in general. We're going to get into the book, transitioning away from the standard American diet, fasting, healing, enemas, the bigger picture culturally speaking, and more. I'm excited to present to you a conversation from October 2021 with my guest who had recently undertaken a solid food vacation that lasted over a year. Please welcome to the show, Brother Air. Do I call you Brother Air, Brother Smart? What do you prefer? Whatever's comfortable. Whatever's comfortable. Most most people in this situation they call me Brother Air because we're on the internet. <laughs> brother so, Air, w- welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, brother. It's, uh, we finally was able to do this, and uh, so hopefully uh, we can impart some uh, something that can help elevate people, man. You know. Absolutely. That's what this show is all about. Yeah. So for our listeners who might not know you, why don't you give a little background um, as to who you are and maybe where you grew up and, and what you're into, and then we'll okay. get into uh, what you do today. Okay. Um, I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, that's where I'm, I'm at right now. Uh, yeah, I left came back in the 90s, take care of my mother. um, I'm a jazz musician, so that's what I do. That was my occupation. And um, when my mother got sick, I kind of got off the road playing with jazz bands and uh, that whole piece. And in the midst of, of playing music and studying, I got uh, turned on to uh, a book called uh, Arnold Eric, uh, Professor Arnold Eric's Mucusless Diet Healing System back in 1982. And at that time, I was a vegetarian, still probably dealing with a little bit of dairy at that time. But once I got the book and, and, and read it, uh, it was like a light went off. And soon after that, I kind of dedicated my life to studying physiology. Uh, still playing music, still trying to juggle both. And it got to a point where I was a jazz musician. I mean, I'm playing all the places, you know, jazz, all the big jazz festivals, traveling abroad and the whole thing. And I got to a point with my practice of the mucus's diet that uh, I didn't want to be in a places like bars and places where they sell alcohol and uh, stop going. I haven't been to a restaurant since 1982. Uh, just really became real uh, advocate for what I called, you know, like cleanliness, you know, like living this this uh this kind of life so at that point you know i was just all in to practicing the mucus diet and i kind of weeded the jazz thing out not not so much weeded it out but i just wasn't doing as much because when you put it out there that you're not getting calls to do things and and you you saying well i'm playing bars so that kind of limits it you know, especially a jazz musician, that kind of limits your calls and uh, 
And so I just existed. I saved money and I just just got into study, man, studying physiology, studying about myself. Uh, just uh, just really immersed myself and um, put myself back together again. And so what we have now is I met uh, Gus Spira at that time, Mike Bopey, the trombone player. He's 18, 19 years old, studying. Uh, this was in 2001. And uh, he was studying trombone, jazz trombone, Cincinnati Conservatory. And he was almost 300 pounds. And turned him on to the book. He caught fire and, you know, it's like the story just, you know, at this point now he's the face of the mucus diet healing system all over the world. And, uh, you know, 20 years later, and we have all the rights to the book. The book is over 100 years old, so he annotated the book and uh, got a nicer looking book now. You know, and so with with more with, with with more information in it, modern information about modern practitioners, you know. So uh that's where we're at man. We uh we just had our third annual Arnold Eric Day in Columbus. People come from all over the world and we had uh, uh speakers like Dr. Robert Mars, uh Chef Babette. So uh, it's then turned into a real major type of uh, modality that people are taking seriously all over the world, and uh, and and it's helping it's helping people really understand uh, how to clean your blood because that's what health is about, and no one ever talks about that. It's always about a diet or this, but really, what health is about if we're going to talk about health it's always about clean blood that should be the the end result whatever it is you're doing it should be about clean blood and we know how to properly transition and how to do that how to clean your blood we know how to do that. that's what we specialize in because our key phrase is transition, transition, transition. So, and I've done a lot. Uh, my my thing, you know, the whole brother air piece has has kind of been fueled by. I've been doing these long fasts since two thousand one. Uh, I've maybe put it, put all the years I've eaten together, probably about two years. You put it all together. I, I fast for like nine months, 10 months. I just came off of, of a year and six days, August 1st. No solid. Uh, so that's that's not the practice of the mucus diet. That's just something that I've been able to do over 40 years of transitioning and researching. I take the position of being a researcher in this modality. That's great. And I recently read Arnold Eret's Mucus's Diet Healing System. It's a fascinating book. It taught me a lot about the blood and about the heart because we're taught that the heart is the pump that mm -hmm. pumps the blood throughout your body. Mm -hmm. But how Professor Eret explains it is that the lungs are the primary um, instrument to drive your blood and that the body is an air gas engine that we don't subsist off food we subsist off air primarily and that's evidenced by the knowledge the common knowledge that air is the most important and vital thing in the human body right if you without air you'll die within minutes right right i mean yeah the priority is there you understand that you can go a day without food you can go a day without water you can't go five minutes without air Exactly. So can you can you further explain um, 
just the importance of air, breath, and how that relates to our blood? Well, um, air is, is the most precious thing. You know, I always talk about we, we need to have a, uh, you know, people talk about their deities, but we need to have a deity called air, you know, because that's something we can really, you know, you say Jesus or Allah, or whatever, but we can really relate to air, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and we know what, how, how vital that is in our life. So when we talk about disease, disease, uh, we talk about obstruction in the blood. The, the, the problem when you get sick and this happens, I mean, you can call it whatever you want to call it. You can call it leukemia. You can call it uh, diabetes. You can call it a stroke. You can call it a heart attack. What's happening is air is not... Uh, is, is being obstructed from going through your bloodline. You see what I'm saying? So there's an obstruction there of what we call mucus and pus. Animal flush, dairy, grains, and starches. This is what you want to, and these are the things that we eat every day. The average person. Well, I mean, even 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 vegetarians right. are eating grains and starches, even if they don't stop even eating meat. You know, they're um, vegans. Grains and starches are a problem. But you learn how to transition away from that. You use grains and starches to learn how to transition away. So when when it when it comes to blood, that's what. Our goal is about it's clean blood, so we want air. So you want the, 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 the key components is sun and air. That's the key components to life as we know it. And it almost seems like the human has strayed so far away from our natural state that we think food is the primary energy source for the human body and not sun and air. We, we take sun and air for granted. Um, well, that has a lot to do with, that has a lot to do with, um, uh, Western medicine and what they teach and how they teach about, uh, the body. And, uh, I always tell folks is that Western medicine has trauma down. Like if I'm in a car accident and I'm bleeding profusely, take me to them. Exactly. But chronic illness, they have no clue on how to heal anything. All they all they want to do is is over medicate you and cut on you. Right. And the cutting part they're really good at, like you said. If you need surgery. Oh, oh yeah. I mean that's 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 what what does a surgeon do? All he does is cut on you. <laughs> so if, it, if if they don't create things to cut on, he has no job. Interesting. So don't don't create the conditions that make it so you have to go to the hospital, right? Exactly. Um, like I say, if I'm having a heart attack, take me to them. If I'm bleeding internally, take me to them. Right. <laughs> That's what they do well. Right, but as far as disease and long-term disease, that's something that we need to take into our own hands. Yeah, if you have a stomach ache, <laughs> stay home and deal with it. Don't run to them. Please don't. You right, know? or a cold or a flu, too. Yeah, all that, all that. You, you, you deal with that. Um, and Arnold Eric had a uh, sanitarium in the 20s uh where people like albert einstein would come and learn how to detox and what arnold eric's specialty was was that he was dealing with chronically ill patients that the western medicine had had kind of threw up their hands like we can't do any more for you and he had a uh, great success with healing them through diet change and enemas close you know cleaning out your colon I do an enema every day. Since 1990, I've been doing enemas every day. 
All right. Um, that's what the sign behind you means, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's matter of fact, when you called me earlier, that's what I was doing. <laughs> so is there ever going to be a point where you've cleaned out all that impacted stool and, and you're and you have a clean body and, and you can stop doing enemas? Or is this something that you anticipate well, doing the rest of your life? See, 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 that that question is always asked to the point where. Let's this, let's talk about the blood. Okay. Whenever we talk about health, we have to talk about blood. Now, think about when we talk about immortality. What's immortal on on you, Zach? What's immortal that you can think of that's on you? Uh, does in my soul does that count? My spirit? Well, that's that's something that that's kind of in your mind, and you kind of think of that as you know what I mean. But 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 something you can put your hands on that you can really notice there is blood oh your bloodline so yeah your bloodline all the way back to i don't know if you're a vegetarian or whatever but you could be the first vegetarian in your bloodline in five thousand years so that's what we're talking about when it comes to health this is what you're dealing with you have to clean that that's why when you say well will you ever be empty well Look at the job that you have to do. You have to clean that kind of blood over thousands of years, you know, mm. of 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 uh, of eating animal flesh and dairy and just uh, our diets, man. Um, so that's what you're dealing with, and it's funny because people <laughs> they they tell they, they tell me this all the time. It's like brother Air, man. There's people that I deal with. He said, brother Air, man. I had a uh, a taste for something. When you go back in time, you start having tastes for things you never even probably heard of. You'd be like, where I get a taste for that from? You know, I mean, like all of a sudden, all that poison starts coming up and through the enemas, you keep getting that stuff out. So that's why the, um, uh, that's why the, uh, the, the enemas, the lemon enemas. We we bought a, a thing to the to the world called the lemon enemas. We call it um, lemonus. So it's lemon and distilled water. And I've been doing one man, one or two, probably do two today. I actually start. I'm actually starting to fast today. So. And what's the I, what's the ratio of lemon juice to water that you use? Uh, it could it could vary from from people. You know, with me, I always suggest people use five lemons to probably the same amount distilled water. And what is it about lemons in particular? Like, could you use lime? Acid. acid. Okay. The acid lemon that pulls off the, that, that, that sticky placky mucus on the intestinal walls. You know, I, I, in my lectures, I, I always use a joke about, you know, when I first started doing enemas, uh, Back in uh, 1990, I'm 61. So back in 1990, when I first started doing enemas that, like that, that frequently, then I was doing like 20 and 25 lemons. I mean, just I mean, it was just really potent. And I used to say, I I would I would look in the in the toilet and I see old blow pops from 1969. <laughs> wow. It'd be like just old stuff that, that's been in your intestinal tract for you know that gets stuck there, man. Because it you your body is a is is a bunch of tubes. Mm -hmm. So you know the intestinal tract. It's just like if you build a house from the from the uh, ground up. That that sink in that new house isn't going to clog in the, in a year probably going to take about 10 years then all of a sudden you might get the buildup of all the grease and 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 stuff that's uh, been coming through the sink and you look at your little elbow down there and you pull it off and you'll see it, all the old cakey stuff that's done caked up exactly that's exactly what you're dealing with with the tubes in your body of eating like that 
for years. So someone who's 20, 30, 40 years old who's been eating the standard American diet, they're clogged up completely with mucus. Oh, they're, they're just as filthy as... Uh, but it, it shows you how, how great the body is, how, how amazing the body is. It can still function. But it's, it's, it's functioning on stimulant. That's why you don't see a high level of thought and sophistication within our society. It's like abnormal has defined what normality is. Yeah, I see that for sure. <clears throat> I see that. So for anyone interested in exploring uh, a cleaner body, cleaner terrain, like you said, transitioning is a big part of that. You don't want to switch all at once. You don't want to just start fasting right away because the built up toxins might start coming out too quick and you might deal with some heavy withdrawals, some heavy um, detox symptoms. So what do you recommend for people who are brand new to this idea of a mucusless diet or just health in general? Like what do you recommend to start someone on a transition? First, get the book. Okay. It's the best, it's the best book on physiology written. And it's the it's Professor Arnold Eret E H R E T. Oh yeah, and get the annotated version because this is the best of those books. Cool. By Professor Spear, annotated by Professor Spear. Um, and I will attest, this book is fascinating. It blew my mind. Oh yeah, it blew my. Why do you think I, I I changed my life, man? I mean, it literally, you know, you you said earlier, your body's an air gas engine. That just I was like, oh. Oh man, that just, I never, and I had been reading all kind of diet books and just everything, man, you know? Yeah, and, and he, Aaron offers good advice on the transition. Many chapters in that book are on transition diet. Well, that's what the whole key to it is, transition. We like to think that we're the masters now of how to transition. We know it. We, we've done lived it. We know how to do this thing. And we've kind of, we like to think that we've elevated Eric's work. You, you know what I mean? Because Eric, Eric never fasted for a year. And you know what I mean? And things like that. So that's where we're at now. So, I mean, I just came off of the fast August 1st. So what is this, October? So I've been eating now. Um, August, September, two months. And I just started today, actually. I'm starting a fast, so. Okay, and now when you say fast, you mean water, there's a mixture of dry fasting, and you do take small quantities of juice, is that correct? Well, now, this one that I'm doing now is just no liquids at all. Dry fasting? Yeah, I'm just dry fasting. This. And how long do you anticipate to I, do this? I don't for? know. Now, what was different with the with the year fast is that I I named it. I, I kind of told people I was going. It was uh, we were doing a uh, a uh, Q and A on Professor Spears' channel, and since that COVID since that COVID year, we couldn't have the uh, Arnold Eric Day that that year. So we did a Q&A and just talked. I said, well, what I'm going to do is, um, since we're celebrating Eric, I'm going to do a fast to the next Eric day. And I came off on the next Eric day. Wow. Which was, we had done that, sh we had done that, I think it was July 26th, where I started that fast. And I came off July 26th of 2020. And I came off on that fast August 1st of 2021. Amazing. And so on the days that you're dry fasting and you are you can't use food to block out emotions or feel good or stimulate your body, what 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 were you feeling? Like what and what were you doing those days too? Well, playing music. I mean, I'm a musician. Uh, I bust a lot where I uh, work for a program here in the city called Street Stage Project, and they send us places to bust. And then I have the band, uh, me and Professor Spirit co-lead a band called the Fire Music Project. 
Professor Spirit Brother is Fire Music Project. And um, uh, doing a lot of that, uh, a lot of playing, um, just dealing with a lot of uh, practitioners from day to day who need help. Uh, I did uh, in December of 2020, I did a fasting tip where I, I really got intense because people would say, well, you're not doing a dry fast because you're doing your enemas. So you, you got some kind of water and dehydration and hydration inside of your body. I was like, okay. So what I did was I did 29 days with no water touching my body. Wow. Period. I didn't even do my enema, which was people were just surprised, like, hey, brother, you don't even, you didn't even do your enema because they know I'm good for doing my enema every day. You know, and so I said, OK, to to leave all the uh, skeptics and everybody, they wouldn't have no reason to say anything. I did 29 days with no liquids touching my body and brush my teeth. I didn't take a bath. Uh, now, how did that how did that feel? Like, what were you going through emotionally during oh, that time? Man. Well, you notice I said 29 days. It was actually I was trying to do that whole month, which that month goes to 31 days. So I literally had to come off of it because I got shaken up. You know, I, was, I, was, I got scared. I was like and, and it wasn't a physiological thing. It was like a, a mind thing where. I was that I, I never have dreams. I mean, I don't dream that often. But I was having dreams two nights in a row where you know how you um, I just take, for instance, you're falling off the cliff and you wake up and, you know, you just wake up, you know, that's mm -hmm. that's how your dream go. I wasn't waking up. I was going, wow. I was going all the way to the continuum of you know, of, of, of falling off that cliff. If, I mean, it not, wasn't necessarily a cliff, but it was a tragic situation that I, you know, was in and I wasn't, I wasn't waking up. I was, so I was you took it all the way through the, to, to the continuum. Of, of, so you took those, those signals, those dreams that your body was sending you, these messages, and you intuitively took those as, I, I think I need to reintroduce water. And yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, and I never drink water on my fast. I always drink just juice. What kind of juice? Pineapple. That's so delicious. Oh, man. It's, for me, it's, it's the one juice that I never get tired of. And, and you're talking fresh. You never yeah. buy this from a can, right? Well, I will, I will buy the bottled juice sometimes, but mostly on this fast, it was through the juice extractor but okay you know i would go to trader joe's they was the only ones that had like this juice that was 100 percent. i mean if you look on the side of you go to trader joe's in your city i guess and you look on the side of this juice and it just says pineapples that's it <laughs> you know what i mean it wasn't from concentrate or anything so i would drink okay. that you know i would drink that and uh uh but yeah Nothing, no water. I haven't. I, I don't drink water until I start back eating, like you know, eating dinner, and interesting, things like that. So, and and what is the thought process behind no water? I just don't like water <laughs> when I'm when I'm juiced, when I'm fasting. I just never did it, and I just, I mean, I, I don't, I don't discourage it from somebody who wants to fast, who wants to drink water. Mm -hmm. I just don't. Okay. And so let's keep talking fasting. The main idea behind fasting and about why it's healthy for people is that you're, you're not obstructing the body. You're not burdening it with food. Right. Right. Um, so just explain, explain that a little more, maybe for people who think that like you have to eat every single day in order to stay alive. Well, me and you are talking right now in live time and we're not eating or drinking and we're still here. 
Now, if on my end or on your end, if somebody obstructs air from getting to us, it's a wrap. This interview is over. <laughs> you dig? So mm -hmm. when it comes to understanding that your body is truly an air gas engine, it runs on air. It does not run on food. It does not run on water. And by, by no means, I'm not telling you to stop eating or stop drinking. But what we at Mucus Free Life try to do is get you to understand how your body truly operates. So when you're talking about fasting, you, you do so many things. When, what happens when your body goes through a fast, so many things get repaired. You, you actually give your organs a rest. You know, can you imagine that? Your organs are working. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're eating and, and, and they're working, the, you know, the liver and the kidneys and the, this. And, and um, so you give, you give all your organs a rest. And you, you're just healing. You're, you're, you're actually on Mother Nature's operating table. All those things that you've been trying to heal, because this is what we get all all day and night is from people who start practicing the mucusless diet, and they are dealing with illnesses that they have never been able. They've been going back and forth to the doctors for years and years, and as soon as they start practicing the mucusless diet, they get results. Right, because they've lifted the burden from their body, and they're letting the body do its natural process, which yeah. is to heal. They're understanding exactly. They're understanding how their body operates. They have been dealing. I had dealt with perfect example. I had dealt with a, a lady who was in Russia, and she was a she was a violinist for the Russian Symphony Orchestra, the the big one over there, the the bird, the Borzark or whatever you call it. And uh, she had 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 got a whip up under her, you know, from holding the the, the violin, you know, and it was a wet that had had formed there. And she had been going to dermatologists for years and years, man. And they, you know, give her some ointment or antibiotic or whatever. And it never would leave. It was a pretty big lesion, you know. Yeah. And she started practicing the mucusless diet and it was gone in like three months. Amazing. I mean, it was just, you know, so... Things like that, you know, um, uh, uh, a brother in, uh, in Paris, they had, the doctors were done with him, you know, some kind of cancer or something. And he, he got into the mucus's diet and started, you know, he just said, all I did was just ate melons, papayas, watermelons cantaloupes for about three or four months and he healed himself. He never went back to the doctor. Still here, still vital. He's on the meetups every Wednesday, on the mucus's diet meetups every Wednesday night. You hear him talking and having fun with everybody else. And he would have been he would have been to the uh Eric Day, but you know, the, the European fly 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 rule was all crazy and so um, so we're talking about real testimonies of real people with, with real chronic illness that doctors just don't even deal with. They just, we can't do any more for you. And I think the testimonials are some of the most convincing parts of this diet because it's real people who have transformed these real conditions that doctors couldn't, couldn't fix. And what I noticed too is that it's the people who have almost hit or who have hit rock bottom health wise who have nowhere else to turn they're basically desperate that they adopt this diet like the average person can't really easily be convinced that a you can subsist on just fruit um and air or b that they should ever consider trying but it. that's not the diet if you you read the book and the transitional diet is fruits and green leafy plants 
and some starchy and grain food, some mucus food, food that create mucus. You don't just jump from eating egg bones and mashed potatoes to becoming a fruitarian. Right. So, yeah. So, I mean, this is what transition is about. You know, we might talk about instead of, okay, you can eat bread, but now toast the bread. Because that makes it drier and easier to break down by the body? Exactly. It slides through the intestines a little bit better instead of being all doughy and, you know. And so the idea behind transitioning, eating some cooked vegetables and starches is that it, one, pushes old <clears throat> waste through the, through the bowels, but also helps sort of dissolve it and break exactly. it down, right? Exactly. All that and your cravings. It deals with your cravings because that's what the enemas do. And people, man, it, it, you'd be surprised how many people see it after two or three years or a year or four years of and they'd be like, hey, brother, so we, we kept hearing you and Spirit talk about it. Now we experience it, how they might have this addiction for that mucus. For They could be doing really good with everything else, but they might, man, I, I, gotta, I have to eat a bag of cookies every couple of weeks or something. And that's fine because you're dealing with an addiction. You're dealing with a, a, the, the most heavy addiction is heavier than heroin and cocaine. It's heavier, than, it's heavier than cigarettes. And, and see, because people can stop. I always see this. People can stop smoking. People can stop doing heroin. People can stop doing cocaine. But now let's deal with trying to stop doing mucus. Like just grain. Even if you stop eating meat. Because people, people have, can stop eating meat. But what, what, what they can't stop doing is those grains and starches, man. That's the hardest thing for, for, for the body to, to, get, to get off of. Because people, people can do really good for weeks. Oh, man, I'm eating mucus, I'm eating fruit strings, and all of a sudden they get that craving for a bag of cookies. <laughs> and that's I fine. I know exactly what you mean. And that's fine. That's fine because you're going to have a butt. What we say is that's why the consistent cleansing goes on with the enemas, because the more you do the enemas, because what you are craving is not really the cookies, it's poison. Hmm. Physiologically, that's what's going on in your body is poison. So you, you, you use cookies as a way to serve that poison. With the enemas, with the consistent enema, all of a sudden you'll notice might be a year, might be three years, might be four years, might be two years, but all of a sudden you'll notice you're not having the cravings for the cookies. Because what you have done is, is you cleaned that poison out. Because that's mm -hmm. all it was, was a craving for poison, physiologically, in, in your blood. So you're saying we're not addicted to the the flavor, the taste, or the cultural aspect around food. It's actually the chemicals in it and what it does to your body on a cellular level. Exactly. Exactly. It's all physiological. It's all physiological. And if you, if you like to say, we're not going to beat you over the head from having a bad day. Oh, man, I did good. I was eating, eating salads, and I was eating, and then I, I had a veggie burger. Beautiful, man. You know, I mean, it's. We understand that mucus is the hardest addiction known to man. Interesting. Yeah, and that's why it's good to know that you're transitioning. It's easy to beat yourself up over slipping up and eating maybe, quote unquote, the wrong food, but. Look back on the weeks or months before that where you, you know, ate real clean. It's, exactly. it's a transition, a general taper away from mucus foods. Exactly, because what you want to do is eventually uh, never deal with those bag of cookies anymore. So it, it might take it might take a hundred bags of cookies, you know, to get through that. It might take you two years, you know. I gotta you know, get through the yeah. thing. I went four years, man. And I was fifteen years into the practice. 
I went four years, man. I could do really good, mucus bliss all day. Then all of a sudden, I had to have my toast, peanut butter, and fruit spread jelly at the end of the night. You know, coming in from gigs, you know, two in the morning, three in the morning. That lasted for almost four years. And how did you feel, like, on a physiological level doing that? Doing that? Well, that was a stimulant. It was a stimulant. It was like I was getting high. Yeah. That was that was my cocaine cuz I used to do cocaine back in the day. And and smoking weed and drinking, that was my stimulant. So, right. After a while it just it just dis I, I didn't even notice it just disappeared. That tape never to ever come back again. Yeah, I was going to ask like wh- how did you know did your body just tell you one day that's enough or it was almost subconscious? It, you didn't notice. You just, you know, you just don't notice that you're not craving it anymore. They go by to that. Then you got to look back like two weeks. You're like, wow, I haven't, yeah. you know, I mean, it was so deep, man. Um, my wife at the time was was uh, collecting the, the little glass peanut butter jars. <laughs> I had like a million of them, <laughs> you know, like. That's funny. Everyone that I'm talking to for the show has the same message, which is to transition slowly. It's not a good idea to jump into your goals right away. Uh, Or rather, you can jump into heading towards your goals right away, but you don't want to jump to the end of the goal right away. It's all about transition because the body is, you just got to be careful with the body. You know, it has so much uh, habit built up in it. But you want results. You want to, you want to, I mean, like, the practice of the mucus is that healing system. Arnold Eric is the only one with a system out there. Nobody else has a system. We endorse the system because we've used it over 40 years. This is the core, 30 some years. Professor Spirit, 20, almost 20 now. We think that this system is the best system in terms of physiology of changing your physiology. We don't think there's nothing better out there, period. Well, it has results. You'll, well, you'll read yeah. the testimonials. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's, so it's a system, and we can all relate on certain levels about how to transition when you get started. We all are there at the same kind of thing, but then your physiology might be a little different. Like, I'm looking at you. You're more of a uric acid type of physiology. Okay, what does that mean? That means that uh, I'm more of a mucus physiology, so I'll gain weight. So you don't have a problem gaining weight, do you? Never can. Exactly. So, but if it's like it's like say you have a wife and she eats the same thing y'all are eating, and all of a sudden she's putting on weight, but you're not. What's the what's the how would you explain that? Different body types. You're burning this stuff up. Okay. And she's not. You see what I'm saying? Physiologically. Oh yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah, physiologically, you're like a uric acid type, but because you're still eating the same poison, you dig. So does that correlate to the the Western idea of ectomorph, endomorph, and mesomorph? Do you know those? Yeah, uh, yeah, I've heard. Yeah, um, uh, I I wouldn't say that. Okay. I wouldn't say that. Um, what we're talking about, see, because we know a lot of people who are uric acid who drop dead. You, you know what I mean? It, it, um, folks who are, I just, we just were talking about somebody who was, uh, 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 what do you call it, a, a personal trainer. Mm-hmm. And they, they look, the, the, you know, the, the side of health as what we think. But he was still eating mucus. Mucus is dangerous, bro. Now, when, when you say that, people might say, oh, I don't eat mucus. They might not know what types of food create mucus in the body. So wh- Bread, bread, beans, uh, potatoes, rice. Dairy. Dairy and meat are pus. That turns into pus. Inter- oh, okay, so there's a differentiation. Yeah, yeah, we 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 changed up the language 
of this thing now. So we talk about mucus and pus. Okay, and to other people, they might not know, they might know that as inflammatory foods. Yeah, well, you know, you keep listening to Western medicine and you'll be all confused. Let's, let's break it down. Let's just call it what it is. It's mucus and pus. All right, so it's the grainy foods and the legumes that create mucus conditions. Yeah, um, things like that, peanuts, seeds. And seeds. Um, you know the reason why you, we, we, we stress don't eat uh, white potatoes and rice? Uh, they're gluey. Okay, okay. They're starchy. Okay, that's, that's the main thing what everybody always answers. But the real reason is they're not sun-grown. Oh, yeah. They're, they're grown in the dirt. Yeah, you want to eat sun-grown foods. Well, I mean, um, even though the roots are underground, aren't the leaves grown by sun and they photosynthesize? Uh, well, look. Let, look, okay, take a white potato, oh, rotten, one white potato in a bag and it rottens. You ever smelt that? I don't think so. Okay, well, I have, and a few other people that we talk to, older people, where my, my, my mother used to have a pantry where the potatoes would just sit in the bag. And you'd be like, what the hell is that? One of the potatoes have rotten. And it would smell like the gorilla cage at the zoo. It was that it was that bad. So something that stinks that bad, you definitely don't want in your body. You know, I mean, because now here you are eating it and the resin. That, well, let's yeah, let's talk about that. When you eat like well, I'm talking about the resin. And and look, I used to smoke weed. And I used to smoke weed out of a pipe. And so if people can relate to this, smoking weed out of a pipe, after you use your pipe for about a year or six months, you get all this resin. Oh, it's sticky and it smells disgusting. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's the bomb, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it gets you high and high, you know, than the normal stuff that you were smoking. So what we're talking about is the resin. Hmm. In the intestines, and as you get older, it starts to corrode and recirculate itself back in the bloodstream. So now you have somebody who, who, who this blood has recirculated itself back into the bloodstream, and it could be in the knee. They have pains in the knee or the hip. They get a hip replacement. They get a knee replacement. This is what the doctors are telling them because they don't have this knowledge that we have about the bloodstream. So they don't recognize it as, well, you need a knee replacement. But they just got dirty blood. That's all it is. Filth. And, it, and, the, and the dirt and filth comes from the broken down toxins that you've stored up over your whole lifetime of eating inappropriate over foods. Over your whole life and your mother and your mother's mother and your mother's mother mother. This is the blood you're dealing with. So your ancestors, you inherit all you their inherit. inappropriate See, that's eating. that's what they try to say. Well, if you, you, you inherit diabetes, you don't inherit diabetes. You eat the same that your mama and daddy eat, then you're going to probably get diabetes. Mm -hmm. You don't inherit it. If you keep eating what your parents done ate, then you're probably going to Get what your parents got. If they died of a heart attack, you probably going to have a heart attack. What we're saying is if you want to change the culture, change your physiology. Mm, we got to break the cycle. There it is. There it is. Create a life culture. Because what we're living in right now is a death culture. Oh, yeah. You look at the food that is considered normal. It's just death and disease waiting to happen. Everything. Everything, and we're not even talking about food. Now, when we say deaf culture, we're talking about the whole culture is always uh, declining around death. Everything in our culture is always around death, around decline. So explain that a little more. Like besides food, what else could you look at that, exhi that exhibits that? Education. 
religion. Well, I think education, let's just stop there. Like, that's the death of creativity for a lot of kids. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at in the black community, I'll just say, I'll just say this in the black community. Okay, now you have you have idioms of music that is looked on as black music, right? Right. So you would have blues, you would have jazz, hip hop. Yeah, hip hop. Well, we don't want to discuss that. <laughs> we don't even want to go there. We let's deal with let's deal with with what is real. We don't even want to go to to that's part of the that's part of that came out of the deaf culture. It's like making a, a, it's a delusion, making something real. But we know what folks like Jimi Hendrix, John Coltrane, and Duke Ellington, we know that that is a reality that takes a lot of effort, you know. Um, so um, what we deal with is we look at these cultures and now we, and now we look at because we do a lot of education because Spira is a PhD mm -hmm. in musicology. So we done went in the classrooms and done done work with the study of jazz music. Now all we see is they done took the music out of all the inner city schools. All the other all the other schools with Caucasians in them have access to learning about Duke Ellington and John Coltrane. The inner city schools are doing what you talk about. All they have access is to the street of hip hop and, and find what they can find because there's no more study of this. Now, when you go to all the colleges and we, we deal with a lot of the college students who are studying jazz and they are all Caucasian, in all these colleges, they have jazz programs now in all of these colleges all over the country. When you get to these programs and you see like maybe 50 students in a program, maybe two of them are, are of color. So now you have nothing but, but Europeans studying black art you have nothing but 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 Europeans just just here in Cincinnati. We have a jazz society. Who is it ran by? White people. Now I'm not I'm not like <laughs> like like jumping on white people because I'm gracious and 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 I have plenty of, of of people that I'm really close to. That's not the point. What I'm trying to say is we're talking about the deaf culture and high high functions and and. And, and 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 what its goal is is to create a decline and to exit you right out of you know what 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 what, what did we say I, I think I posted something the other day I said yeah when people were talking about black lives matter I said your black lives matter only to white lives who use black lives as consumers that's the only reason it matters. That's the relationship between black and white people in, a, in our country right now is consumer to, 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 to somebody who purchases. That's the only relationship we have. Don't try to act like we, we sitting around the circle and thinking about y'all because it's not there. And the reason why is mucus and pus. That's, the, see, that's why I wanted to go all the way around you know, like circumlocution, all the way around to, to bring it to this is all about our stomachs. If we eat like animals, we act like animals. Totally. What you just said rings very true to me. Um, I mean, I studied jazz in, in, in college with a bunch of white people, just like you described. And I got in trouble for asking my music history teacher about Duke Ellington. She said, ah, she got all defensive when I asked, how come we don't study Duke Ellington? It's just insane to have a, have a jazz program that, that will shy away from Duke Ellington. Come on, man. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's like, so, so this is what I'm talking about. This is, 
this is part of the stomachs. We call them the stomachs. These are this is why this this thing does not make any sense. And what our commitment at Mucus Free Life is is to put this culture in the dustbins of history. That's our commitment. So you're actively trying to reshape American culture or or global culture. Culture. Just culture, period. We're trying to create a life culture because this is a deaf culture. Mm. So this culture uh, revolves around decline. What we're trying to do is we're trying to create a life culture that's about immortality. I love it. So if people want to learn more, they can go to mucusfreelife.com. Yes. Um, they can check out Professor Spears' YouTube page. You're on a bunch of those videos. They do a lot of long format discussions like this one. Yeah. Um, do you have your own personal website? No. Okay. Uh, I mean, Spear has me up all over on, on Facebook and Brother Air. This I don't really, I, I have no clue because I don't go to that stuff. Okay. But I, I always see notifications of, man, you need to come over here and answer all these notifications. So, but basically, um, I am starting uh, uh, actually a new program that now this is, this is actually my my piece. It's called a life uh, life support, and so what it is is going to be kind of like a psychology psychiatry type of uh, support uh, for those who it's going to be twenty four seven. And it, it kind of came out of the AA meetings type of deal, you know, because one of the uh, one of the, uh, the the practitioners would always say, "Man, this this meetup is like the like the, my AA," you know. It's like so I kind of have been vibing on that and been dealing with people who really need more than just the physiological breakdown. It's almost like an emotional thing that I ended up I ended up going through with them, and so that's gonna be something that I'm starting called life support twenty four seven. Amazing. That's gonna be a, a program that uh, it's not gonna be free, but I'm gonna let people pay me what they want to pay, whatever you think is worth. You know, that's great because when we talk about death culture, I think money is a huge part of that. Yeah, and 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 yeah, I mean, like we all need need money to get this and to get that, but you know, to be uh, and dated with material mythology. Just I just know people that just right or wrong this, this decides on if it's about money or if it's not about money. That's what their right and wrong logic is. Oh yeah, we're very materialistic based culture. And yeah, we're addicted to the wrong foods. You're totally right that we need to reformat this culture a bit or maybe more than a bit. And it starts with the stomach. It starts with the stomach. We, we, we got to get people to understand that if you eat like an animal, you're gonna act like an animal. So we need to get like, like, like we break it down like this. Like all the tragedies that you see, and what's going on in Cincinnati is like what's happening is young black males are shooting up each other like every day. Like is there, there's two murder, like there's just uh, three dead, three young men under 25 dead at the gas station last night. That's terrible. I mean, it was just insane, man. It's like, so, I mean, that's happening every day, every other day. It's like young black males are getting shot. Okay, so what we propose is we say, look at the person who did the shooting and look at the deaths. And if you did autopsy of the, of the deaths, look at what they're eating. I guarantee you it's not fruits and green leafy plants. Something tells me you're right. You know, so what we're trying to do, and I know it's a hard sell because they don't they don't relate physiology to none of these problems. They think they can put some preachers in in a situation to go in and talk to them. 
to the to the to the young man or put him in a scared straight program or something. And, and it's it's you know you got to get to them. Uh, like I say, uh, people who are eating fruits and green leafy plant have no kind of stimulation to go hurt nobody. Right. Well, and they've taken their health into their own hands, and they they're they're more aware and conscious of of their body and and how it interacts with the world. Yeah. Yeah. So you know that's what we're all here to help people understand is and provide information for for everyone to get closer to health so that we can be a healthy influence in the world. Well, I'm here anytime you, you need me to come and, and, and talk about the Christmas diet. What I want to ask you is how do you know Mario? Where did y'all meet? Oh, Mario and I met in New Orleans. Uh, he's a fantastic trumpet player. We played in a few bands together. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm a saxophone player. Oh, okay. So we we play brass band and funk and jazz music together, and oh, okay. I, I just admire that dude. You know, yeah, man, that's my cat. Well, we we used to be on the road together, man. Mario, it was man, Mario. He would bring his baby to to the gig, and th- now this was like gigs that I wasn't on, but I would come to to the gig, and I would hold the baby. Nice. <laughs> And I would hold the baby while he would be playing, and then he'd come on stage and grab the baby. You know, I mean, we talk about like an imp, you know. That's beautiful. And uh, so Mario is something else, man. Cool. All right, well, brother Air, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. A lot of good stuff, and you know, I uh, hope to have you back on, or maybe we'll just call you and we'll catch up sometime. You can call me anytime, man. I got your number. You got my number. Whatever comes first. And um, uh, like I say, uh, anytime you want me to come on this format, talk about the mucus diet uh, what I'm, or what I'm doing physiologically, uh, I will be there. Sounds good. I appreciate it. And um, you have a great gig tonight, okay? Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Cool. All right. We'll talk again soon. Peace.